Hello friends, hope all of you are doing well. In today's session, we are going to discuss one of the most important and common topic that comes very frequently in exams, borrowings. Okay, so this is basically a topic from block 2 of MEG 4 aspects of language paper. In today's session, we are going to discuss only one borrowing that is Celtic borrowing. Now with the thumbnail, you might have already seen and you might be thinking that why sir is pronouncing it as Celtic borrowings, rather it should be Celtic or few people pronounce it in different ways but actually here the C is being replaced by K in pronunciation okay so it is pronounced as Celtic rather than Celtic so prior to this video which is going to be primarily devoted on Celtic borrowings in English language I have done a very dedicated video on the history of English language which is basically divided into three parts old English period middle English period and modern English period so for all those viewers who have not watched that video, I highly recommend that you go ahead and watch that video so that you can understand the connection between the borrowings and why the borrowings took place in the English period. Also do hit the like button so that we can reach a wider audience and do consider to join our Facebook page and our Facebook group so that we stay connected because up there we update all the regular notifications of IGNO and relevant documents and PDFs of our lectures on a regular basis. Now without wasting any further time let's start with the video. So we'll proceed with this session in such a way that you are able to organize your answer in a very systematic fashion so that if a question is asked from this topic borrowings, let it be Celtic borrowings or Scandinavian borrowings or Latin borrowings, which is by the way, one of the most common topic that comes as a short note in MEG4 aspects of language paper. You are able to present your answer in such a way that you are able to score the maximum marks. So first we are going to discuss the main reasons of borrowing words from various sources. Remember that in the previous session I have given you a hint that English people, the English culture as a whole is a incorporation of lot of words and lot of concepts that has been taken from different cultures and linguistic communities. So we will understand first of all what are the main reasons. Then we'll see how the history of language, English language is divided into three periods which I've already discussed and which period was the period which was highly influenced by these borrowings. And finally, we are going to discuss the Celtic borrowings. Okay, so that way the answer will be in a more organized and systematic manner. So the main reasons of borrowing words from various sources can be categorized into three points. Number one, contact with other cultures through conquest and collaborations. Number two, the socio-political circumstances and number three, the need to explain new ideas. Now we know that the English culture as a whole has evolved to a new dimension and the primary factor responsible for that is external. Now we'll discuss about some instances like for instance external factors in the history of England like the Christianizing of Britain in 597 AD. Okay, so that way the Christianity was spreading all over Europe we know and in Britain it was happening in 597 AD, around 597 AD and that is also one of the reasons of borrowings. Then we have the Scandinavian invasions, the Norman conquests which is actually one of the most turning point and one of the most crucial point for borrowings, the Hundred Years War, the rise of the middle class, the renaissance, the expansion of British Empire which is basically colonization and our country in itself, our nation India was a victim of it along with lot of African countries and lot of countries in the subcontinent itself. Now this all things have contributed immensely to the growth of English vocabulary. Now we all know that the history of English language has been divided into three main periods. The first one being Old English period that was from 450 AD to 1150 AD. Now surprisingly and very conveniently the Celtic civilization also flourished during this period and we can understand that how this Old English period was related and how it was connected to the Celtic civilization. Now mind you the Old English vocabulary despite minor borrowings remained overwhelmingly Teutonic. Okay. The vocabulary was enlarged rather by means of combination than external borrowings. It was only through the Norman conquest that a large number of foreign words entered the English vocabulary. Now when the Norman conquest happened, we know that the Middle English period have already started. Now the Middle English period reigned from 1150 AD to 1500 AD and which was followed by the Modern English period 
that was from 1500 onwards and again the modern english period was divided into early modern english period and late english period now after understanding the main reasons behind the borrowings in the english culture and the language in itself and also the different periods of english language and the particular period which was primarily responsible and was highly influenced by the borrowings and also the particular event that set into motion the borrowings in force let us now move forward to celtic borrowings but before that let us see little bit of history of the celts as a whole now about 1000 years before christ a collection of people emerged in central europe who were known as the celts the word celt comes from the greek word keltoi which means barbarians and is properly pronounced as celt now in the beginning of the video i have already mentioned that this word is not pronounced as celt even though it has a c rather the c is replaced by k in the pronunciation and it is pronounced as celt now the earliest celtic settlement thus far discovered by archaeologists is a site at helstedt in austria now a lot of historians also believe that the celts actually originated from ireland now that's a matter of debate but for the sake of this session we will be focusing on the fact that the earliest celtic settlement was discovered in austria all right and that's what you need to write in your answers as they spread to other parts of europe they exhibited one so let me tell you one thing that even though the celts were quite barbaric in nature they were very progressive in certain aspects of lifestyle and that made their civilization one of the most dominant civilization in the central europe and they were eventually successful in creating their influence in the neighboring areas as well but even after that this civilization met its downfall by mid 13th century onwards a lot of historians claim that the primary reason behind this is that the celts leader were not united now you have to understand one thing that even though this celtic civilization spread over the central europe it was not governed by a single celtic leader however it was divided into a lot of sects and lot of communities among the entire civilization and all this particular sects claimed autonomy okay that means all these leaders ruled their particular segment of land and they didn't like interference and eventually that was the reason that they couldn't resist foreign invasion the conquest of the celts by the teutons resulted not only in the mixture of these two races but also their languages the result of the contact between these two languages called chiefly found in the place names now we have to understand that the limitation of celtic borrowings in english language is again very limited and it's limited to a particular domain itself particularly in place names okay you have to understand that very particularly that celtic borrowings has been taken no doubt undoubtedly but it has been restricted to place names for instance the kingdom of kent owes its name to the celtic word canty or cantion which meaning is unknown similarly devonshire cornwall cumberland also have celtic origins even the name london most likely goes back to celtic designation not only place names but also names of hills and rivers in england have celtic origins now this is going to be interesting because the most popular river of england thames is a celtic river name and various other celtic words for river and water are preserved in the names of avon dover wye etc outside of place names the influence of the celtic upon english is almost negligible now as i have mentioned that the influence of the celtic borrowings has been restricted to place names and the hills and the rivers mostly so it has not been you know able to influence the entire vocabulary of english but yes there has been a lot of borrowings and you have to remember that in particular for the exam purpose like the words i have mentioned you have to remember them all now very few words like bin which means basket or crib braft which is cloak and brock brock on badger were introduced into english due to everyday contact of the people of both races now some words like anchor which means hermit dry magician sign a gathering of parchment of leaves cross etc were introduced into english by irish missionaries now many of these words died out soon and some acquired only local currency 
Now, if I'm asked to sum up today's session in examination point of view, then I would start my answer for a short note on Celtic borings for five marks with the intro part, which will include the main reasons of borings first of all. All right, then you can move on by mentioning the instances, the external factors, the particular reasons of borings, followed by the history of English language, which was again divided into three parts, and which particular period was moving in tally with the Celtic civilization. And don't forget to mention the Norman conquest, which was primarily responsible for the bor borrowings and which made the borrowings to come in force. Okay. And when you start with the Celtic borrowings, you have to start with the history of the Celtic borrowings. Uh, don't go in uh, too much brief, just keep it discreet and concise. And after you move on from the history of the Celts, then you have to mention the words that I have mentioned in today's session. You have to memorize them because it's not possible to guarantee full marks without mentioning the words in particular which has been borrowed in the English language. So this is the video guys. I have tried my best to explain you the concept of borrowings in English literature, why it happened, the major reasons, how the particular period of English literature or language was in tally with the Celtic civilization and Celtic borrowings as a whole. If you have any other doubts regarding this session, do feel free to comment in the comment section. And yes, I'll do cover the Scandinavian borrowings, the Latin borrowings and the Greek borrowings as well in the coming sessions. So if you don't want to miss those videos, don't forget to switch on your notification bell. And if you like this video, do share it with your friends so they can benefit as well. And I'll try to upload the PDF of today's lecture in a social community pages. That is the Facebook page and the group, which if you have not joined already, do consider to join it. Till I meet you next time, God bless you and thank you all.